but it's there. to drop a bit of a bomb. It happened earlier today. I want to share it with our audience worldwide. You're predicting what exactly? I think it, we're at the cusp of a bear market in both stocks and bonds oh. that will last up to 30 years. 30 years. And so this is on, on a real basis, on a, not an anomalous basis, inflation-adjusted basis. So on an inflation-adjusted basis, investors who put money into the stock market or the bond market go to sleep and wake up 30 years from now will have made no money. Made no money, exactly. That's Why? Well, it's not unheard of in history. As you know, there was a bear market in bonds last in the early 40 years. It began in the mid-40s, ended in 1980. We've had a 20, 25-year bear market in Japan, it's going back to 1989. We're the most overvalued market in history. There's more leverage throughout the world than there's ever been in history. Central banks are, have lost all their ammunition, and because basically because there's so much credit outstanding throughout the world. And it's not unheard of to have a, a long-term bear market. There, there'll be a lot of money to be made both on the downside and the upside within the bear market. We'll get to that in a moment, but you said a couple of things that I need to follow up on. The most overvalued equity market in history? Worldwide, looking at all equity markets throughout the world and combining them, we're definitely at the most uh, overvalued. I believe just even the PE ratios on the New York, New York Stock Exchange are just above their, their P ratio at the trough in 2009, the average P median to median ratio. Marks are way overvalued, and, and yields are very low. And they're not the exact low in yields, but if you look what yields we were 30, 40 years ago when you got 5, 6, 7 percent on stocks, and now you're getting 1 percent, 1 half percent on stocks in yields, way overvalued. You mentioned central banks. What if Mario Draghi's whatever it takes really is a whatever it takes, a whatever it takes to keep risk yes. assets rising? Yes. yes. If whatever it takes means Zimbabwe or, Germ or Germ hyperinflation in Germany, stocks will do well, but not as relative as the inflation rate that it's going to create. So that's why I say stocks are beginning a bear market in, not in real terms. In nominal terms, stocks may be up 1,000% over the next three years if he does all that inflation is a problem. Where is it? No, there is not, no inflation. No, your question was what if Draghi happens to take sure, all that okay. it takes? That would be real well, inflation. But what they've done up until now is pretty extraordinary. Well, they're trying to, and still we haven't seen it. Well, they really, they, it's extraordinary. And the books, they're doing something that makes absolutely no sense with negative rates. But there's so much credit within the system that just allowing people to borrow more and more money doesn't really help the system. It just causes a, a greater bubble, which ultimately will, be, will deflate. They may have talked about bubbles. See, when I got in the business, there are many bubbles, but they, each individual country has its own bubble. The United States may be inflating a bubble while Germany is deflating. Now it's one big worldwide bubble. The central banks are all acting, all acting in unison. So once it's bubble pricks, it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty terrible. There are a, a pretty, okay, well, let's explore that for a moment. Yeah. Pretty terrible means what? Well, we're going to see 2000, and, March of 2009 and I, again. And I'm going to tell you that I don't know the answer because there's one of two major things. Either the deflation is going to accelerate, which is the most likely scenario, will accelerate because not able to inflate, or they will actually turn to real inflation, which is real printing, rather than just credit creation. Helicopter money. The helicopter money. Either way, it, it, it's disastrous. Either way. There are a lot of people here who, as you know, are going to disagree with you, some who already have. Yes. What do you say to them? Why is this a bear market for 30 years? Why isn't it just a massive correction like we were just discussing? You know, and then things get back on track. Well, you could argue there won't even be a correction, right? You can argue the market can go straight up for the next 30 years. I mean, why not? That's, most people here believe in the long-term idea that just buy stock, hold it for 30 years, and make 10 percent per annum. That is totally beta is dead. In other words, statistically incorrect. But is that what you're saying? Beta is this the whole idea that the whole idea that you buy stocks and hold it for long term was never correct. Let me give you an example. <laughs> we bought, beta was it, never alive. It was never correct because if you, if you bought stocks at average prices over history, on average you made 10 percent. If you bought stocks at above average prices, for example, in the top 2% quintile of price, of 2% um, of, of, uh, of pricing, you'd make 1% per annum over, over, over the future. If you bought stocks at the bottom in 1932, you made 18% per annum over the long term. So we're not at average prices, not average levels, we're at above average okay. price, above average You're level. getting to an important point, though, which is even if people disagree with you on the 30-year bear market, you are talking about how to make money. Yeah. How do you make money in this environment well, in which you, in, that you envisage? Well, we have how, how, how we, the typical investor should be out of stocks and out of bonds and wait for a crisis and buy during the crisis. Do what Warren Buffett does. He doesn't call himself a market timer, but he raises cash when the markets are doing well, and he puts that cash to work and markets doing poorly. Wait for the next crisis. Put your money under the pillow. Wait for the next crisis. However, institutional and buy the lows. And buy the lows. And, you have to trade the lows because it probably won't be long-term lows, long-term plateaus. But institutional investors must remain flexi maintain flexibility, understand that markets will be volatile. They really haven't been very non-volatile over the last four years. People think they've been volatile. One of the lowest volatile periods in history. 
we measure the S&P uh, trading range, 6.4% trading range. We had the lowest, the, the greatest number of days in the 6.4% trading range since 1928, just over the last year. So the marks are not volatile. They will be volatile in the future and capitalize on it. That's what we do. We invite the clients to capitalize on volatility.